Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, and you're back for another Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Now, if you remember in the previous video, I told you about what's up with my amplifier for my computer, and we discussed how and how not to make a dual rail power supply. Well, continuing on from that, this is the beginnings of the new amplifier for my computer. And as you can see, I have already put the power supply components in. I've already come up with a schematic, but I want to test to see whether this can work off an unregulated supply or whether I will have to put regulators in. So, this is the circuit that I've come up with. It's a Class B amplifier with negative feedback. Now normally you wouldn't make an amplifier this way. As you can see here, the two output transistors have their bases connected directly together. And if you do that, you get a, a 0 0.6 volt dead zone where the transistors don't amplify. And of course, that would be very distorted. You wouldn't sound very good. However, if I take the output and feed it back into the non-inverting input of the op amp, that's going to produce a corrected waveform, which is going to correct for the distortion, and it should sound good. And I've already started building. Now, ignore what's on the left, that's nothing to do with this circuit. All of this around here is the circuit. Now, at the moment, it's very bare bones. I haven't put in the um, power supply filter and power supply bypass capacitors, and I haven't put in the feedback resistors at the moment that output is just going straight back into the input so it's going to have a one-to-one -one game. Anyway, I'm going to power this up and do a few tests. Right, okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to test this rectifier circuit. So on this white wire we should have our positive voltage, on the black wire we should have our negative voltage and the green wire should be our ground or zero volts rail. So I'm going to measure between the negative and positive rails and with this transformer, we should have about 32 volts, if all is going well. Oh yeah, we've got about 34 volts. Well, that's uh, within what I was expecting. Alright, so I'm now going to take this lead and I'm going to put this on our zero volts rail and make sure that's working. And we've got positive 17 volts. Alright, I'm going to put this other lead onto the negative rail and we should have about negative 17 volts. Perfect! Well it looks like I will have to put voltage regulators in here after all because the output from this transformer is just a little bit too much and I've added voltage regulators. Let's see if this works. So, clip one need of my meter onto the negative, the other one onto the positive, and if this is working we should get 24 volts when I plug it in. Let's see what we get. Come on, 24 volts, okay. 24 volts from positive to negative. I'm now going to take my meter's negative clip and I'm going to put that onto the ground slash zero volts wire. We should have positive 12 volts, and yes we do. Right, let's try that on the negative wire. Negative 12 volts. If you're hearing weird noises in the background, that's mum on the phone. Anyway, let's test this circuit's behaving. So, first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that they're there are no offset voltages, so I'm going to connect my meter to where these two transistors meet. I'm going to plug this in, hopefully this should go down to nothing. If it does, then I'll move on to the next part of the test. Part of the test, not part of the test. Alright, that one's gone down to nothing, or well, almost nothing. Let's check what this one is giving us. I got it in the right hole. Yep, good enough. Right, so I've connected up a speaker to one of the channels. I've got two of these, but I'm just testing one for now. 
made by Rank Hi-Fi, apparently. Didn't know they made speakers, just thought they made carry-on films. Anyway, I'm going to touch the inputs and see if we get a buzz out the speaker. Oh, yeah, we do. It's not very loud, but it is there. Right, let's connect that to the other outputs. Make sure that's working. Actually, I can hear a slight buzz out the speaker already. Yep. So, we pretty much have a working amplifier and I haven't even put all the parts in yet. Right, okay. So, I've got it connected up to both speakers now. I've got some music playing into it, but you're not hearing anything at the moment because I have removed both of the input capacitors. I'm going to put them back in one by one so you can tell that it is this amplifier circuit that's actually doing the amplifying. So, in goes the left. Now the right. And there we go. It's been playing for a while. Just gonna see if anything's getting warm. I'd say the output transistors are lukewarm. Got the voltage regulators. Mm, about the same. Okay, so we know this is working. Now we've got to go from breadboard to circuit board. Also, I'll be using the transistors that I actually want to use. These are just placeholders, really, just to make sure that the circuit works. And obviously, I'll be putting in all the additional components as well. Well, here it is. It is done. Haven't put the chip in yet, but, um... So this is what it looks like on this side. This is what it looks like on the other side. My terrible soldering. It's not 100% exact to the schematic, which I've gone and lost. So I don't have a visual aid to show you what I'm talking about. Just like everything in this room goes missing, but... Now, I haven't put the chip in yet. I'm going to go and do that in a moment. So anyway, um, what I wanted to do was have supply bypass capacitors on just about every point which would be important to have them and well due to um, space constraints that is just not going to happen. You might be able to see here from the positive voltage regulator I've got a star point connection with a wire going to this transistor, then one going to this transistor and one going to the chips positive supply and on the negative voltage regulator got the same thing I've got a wire going to this transistor, a wire going to this transistor and a wire going to the negative supply pin of the chip so what I've gone and done as well as make a star point ground is I've just put a couple of capacitors at the output of the voltage regulators see the wires are um, nice and short so I don't think that's going to be much of a problem I mean, the wires that I was using when I was doing the tests, they were much longer than that, and it worked fine, so... I didn't even have any output capacitors on the voltage regulators, so... Yeah, I I think we're going to be good. I just noticed that one of these capacitors is in the wrong place, so... I'm just going to go and sort that out, put the chip in, and we'll see if it works. Okay. So, I've got one of the outputs connected up to my voltimeter. And I've got this connected up to my homemade power supply, just for safety reasons. I've set this to about 15 volts. And when I turn it on, I don't want to see this change barely at all. If we get, say, 12 volts or something on the meter, we'll know something's wrong. So, turning on now. Okay, that's good. 
half a millivolt, that's really good. Now I've set this amplifier to have a gain of about three with the feedback resistors I've chosen. I will redraw the schematic in a little bit. And let's just check the other channel, make sure that's behaving. Hopefully without shorting anything out. Okay, there's a bit more offset on the other channel, but nothing really drastic to worry about. Well, let's try this with some audio. Right, well, got it connected up to my vintage speakers again. Yeah, I know it's comically undersized compared to these speakers. Let me put my ear to each one, I can hear a buzz. A very faint buzz. I've got the input wire here. Okay. That's a good sign. Let's plug it into some audio. Okay, so I've built a little input filter circuit to filter out any of the nasties from the um, what's coming into the amplifier. Let's just get that camera centered a bit better. So let's play some audio into this thing and uh, let's see if it works. Lisa Simpson, who has something to say. So go on, Lisa, tell everyone. My name is Lisa Simpson. Oh, I love Tom and Stagger so much, I just want him to marry me. Um, yeah, let's not pretend we heard that. Okay, I'll see if there's anything decent on this tape. No idea what's actually on here. Are you sure you're not trying to take over? What do you mean? Of course I'm trying to take over. This show is so bloody crap, I'm the only good character on here. Ricky? Huh. Can I punch you? No. I'm gonna do what? it anyway. Oh, the speakers. Now you can yeah. barely hear anything. I think we should make a new sport. Yeah. We're gonna release the speakers? Ricky. It could become a great new sport that everybody's into. I'm not. Well, you wouldn't be. You're the punch bag. Yeah, I think we can say that's working. And lo, it is done. Well, hopefully anyway. I've still got to test this, make sure it all works. And then I'm going to put it onto my computer and we'll give it a listen. Well, I suppose you want to see a schematic now. Here's the schematic for the power supply section. With a... Positive 12 volts, negative 12 volts, and 0 volt rails. And the actual amplifier itself. So we've got an input filter, op amp, output transistors, and of course speakers. It's pretty self explanatory. So yeah, um, at the output of the chip, we may get a waveform that looks like, mm -hmm, say, uh, like this. Compensating for the transistor's dead zones. And the output of the transistors will get a nice sine wave. Like that. Well, I cannot draw a sine wave to save my life, but you get the general idea. Well, it works. That's why I want to be class videos. 80 degrees Celsius, which is what it says on the unit that's yeah. close to. And that might seem quite nice. It is quite Compute nice. down a little bit. But I would guess that one of the main well. is sort of found is Okay, Clive, I need to talk here. Yeah, I think it's time to put this onto the computer. Well, there it is. Now in place of that tape recorder. Now some of you might be thinking, you need to put a heatsink on those transistors and those voltage regulators. Well, the thing is, the levels that I listen to my stuff at, you know, I don't listen to my stuff very loud, so it doesn't actually get hot enough to need a voltage regulator or a heatsink on the transit um, heatsink on the voltage regulator or a heatsink on the output transistors. So yeah, I think that's going to be just fine. And now let's just have one more final word from Big Clive since we had him earlier. Uh -huh.
Why does it always do that? I double click on a thing and it scrolls. Okay, let's explode. One moment, please. So I've blown up lol. Uh, no offense was meant by that, by the way. That was just a little thing I did for fun. Anyway, that seems to be working well, so uh, yeah. I'm going to listen to my homemade amplifier, and until next time, goodbye. Okay, show Hiyushi Shirkit. Uh... This was behind that for some reason, I don't know why. Hey Tails, you got a little something right there. Actually, I'm just going to go and discharge these. I'm going to unplug the transformer. It's a transformation. Just uh, discharge me caps. Them teenagers outside. Probably all drunk.